Good morning, guys, and welcome back to Barham Engines once again. Hope you've had a lovely weekend. So the customer's gonna pick that up tomorrow. By the time you watch this video, it's gonna be gone. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I know it's only another engine that we've done, but I'm gonna be really sorry to see that go. I absolutely love this engine. I love the look at it. It's a really pretty 16 valve lump. And um, yeah, I'd quite like to take it home and make a table out of it really for my front room. But um, I did mention it to my missus, my um, wife, and uh, she wasn't too happy with that idea. So I don't think that's gonna happen. Looks really nice, hope it goes as well as it looks and hopefully the customer should be really happy with that. All right guys, here we've got a Focus ST um, and this is the usual where they blew a head gasket. Now I haven't measured the bores yet but I'm expecting they're pretty bad. But this block here we've skimmed as you can see and we've done the, how much have we took off this one? About 30 thou? About 35 thou we've took off this block. So. As I said to you before, these are one of the only blocks that the block seems to warp as, as much, if not more, than the head. Um, so we've got one customer, this one of which belongs to him, and he tends to buy these blown up or whatever they are, or head gasket done, and he, he fixes them and sends them out. Um, what we'll probably find on this is by when we measure the bores, they're going to be at least three thou oval in places, um, but all he wants us to do is just deglaze them face the block, as I say, um, and face the head, and he puts them back together, and fingers crossed, he never usually has any issues or any comebacks on them, but Isaac's just in the process of skimming the head, and as you can see, that's 10 thou off. And you can see by it touching both ends, only just, there's probably gonna be, what, about another 20 thou took off that before it cleans, so yeah. I'll get him to vacuum the valves afterwards, see what they're like, but yeah, pretty dreadful. Another grotty engine. This here, I do believe, is a Land Rover petrol. Um, seen better days, I know. It's in pretty much the same state as the, the Jaguar is over there. Um, so this is probably, I'm gonna leave this one to Isaac as soon as he's got through some of the cylinder heads and we got this diff out of the way. We're gonna get that one stripped. This one here, definitely, I would quite like, if the customer can just hang on that little bit more, I'd quite like to leave this to when we get that vapor blaster because I am absolutely dying to get something in that and, um, and get it blasted because, yeah, you can imagine the before and after photos. It's gonna look absolutely fantastic when it's done, but at the moment, it looks horrible. Let's get Isaac involved in that one. So the differential for the kit car, and here it lies, all the old bits and the new bits. So really excited to get this one finished now. I did put it in a video that we got the new ATB diff and many of you have emailed me back saying, yep, yeah, great choice, you won't be disappointed with that. Although one guy did email me, um, which I read this morning, and he said the, the problem obviously where it's gone slack here is because of that, that crush washer there. He said the first thing you wanna do, obviously the idea of this is to, you sort of torque up the knot on the end, it's to, it's to keep the, the sort of correct preload on the bearing. He said, the only trouble is being in what it is, um, because it's got the bike engine and your track use, it's just gonna pommel that to death. Um, so he advised me putting in a solid washer on that. So I don't know what you guys think. Um, put down the comments below what you think on that before we get it built. My feeling is I'd quite like to keep that one in there because that's how it's meant to be. I'm not sure what sort of effect a solid washer would have and what torque we'd have to put on the you know, what preload we'd have to put on it, what torque we'd have to put on this nut with that. Whether any of you guys could um, point me in the direction, the correct direction there, um, would be much appreciated. But yeah, here we go. We've got the case in there all cleaned up. Um, just got to get the outer races out of this case in. Um, well, sorry, out of these. And obviously get this bearing off here. We've got all new bearings to go side, both sides and, and on the pinion shaft there. Um, obviously, we've got to remove this crown wheel and that there is surplus then. This is the open diff, as you can see. I think the problem with the, most of the problem with the knock-in is there's quite a lot of play in these planet gears. Um, so they're going to be rattling around. So hopefully this new one here tightens all that up. Because obviously being a straight cut gearbox, 
and being sequential and that in the bike engine it's all a bit direct and any little bit of play and backlash you get a real old clonk in the car yeah we've got new seals and what have you guys so some point this week when i'm not quite so i'll say not quite so busy i should probably have to come in an evening and do this but i'm going to set the camera up and um we'll do a little video on me putting this attempting to put this back together so yeah please comment down below guys any of you little you um any of you diff experts if you can point me in the right direction of putting a solid spacer in here and obviously i have watched a couple of youtube videos but just any tips you've got on setting the backlash of all this um be much appreciated we're really looking forward to getting this back together because um you know one of the main reasons not just this shaft wobbling about and it sort of knocking excessively but one of the reasons really was to um up the performance on the the grip levels of the car because as good as an open diff is in respect that it makes the car turn in you know well enough and that's what i didn't want to upset mm -hmm. It was just the now and again spinning the inside wheel when either you sort of turning and going over a little bump or turning very, very sharp and putting the power on early. Because that's all the problem was really. It was just on the tight corners when you come out and, and sort of going over little bumps, it would spin an inside wheel fairly, fairly easy and the car just doesn't go anywhere. So I'm hoping that that really does work, especially on tracks like Perrinporth where it is nice and, you know, point and squirt and tight. It should work a treat with that car um, and especially in the future when um, maybe we chuck a little turbo on the side of it you don't know yet um, but yeah haven't really driven the car in the rain in anger but I know that this diff here should work wonders in the wet because that car with an open diff in the wet was absolutely hopeless um, so yeah let's see what happens with it guys all right guys so I'm just in the process of uh, I think this is an XR650 or something like that. But I'm just in the process of reconditioning this cylinder head here. This is for a gentleman that uh, we've done plenty of work for in the past, um, but he lives in France. And he said that our prices compared to the prices in France are so cheap, it's well worth him just sending it over here and getting us to do it. So any of you guys in France need some work done, probably worth giving us a little tinkle via email just to get some um, quotes and what have you. But yeah, well on the way with that one. Just got to cut the seats and um, then face the valves and we've got the, the new valve stem seals, etc. there to go in it. But guys, we've got over here, we've got a job that's, fairly interesting this is a Porsche 911 so this is a flat six air-cooled engine um, for a garage that we've dealt with for years called Cole Wills Garage now these get involved with um, these Porsches from time to time and he said the problem he's got here he's got one replacement cylinder head um, that we've got to just check out we've got to go through all the cylinder heads and just do the valves and seats and clean them all up um, but he has an issue with one of the, the cylinders. As you can see, there's a big chunk out there and a crack that goes all the way down to the base. Not just as straightforward as getting another barrel for one of these because they're quite hard to come by. So this is an original barrel. It's a 100 mil bore size. As you can see, the liner in it sort of is all cast in, but it sort of protrudes at the top here and then sticks out the bottom. So, one problem that he has got at Cole Wills is he can't get another one of these. So he's managed to get one of these, which is a smaller capacity. This is a 95 millimeter bore, but it's got a very slightly different um, top. It's got a, a groove for a, what looks like an O-ring in the top here. But the actual casting is the same, um, the outside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna order a liner for this that is gonna sort of, I'm gonna to have to modify, but it's gonna do the job. So we have got a 95 mil bore, it's gotta to go to a 100 mil bore. The outside of both of these flanges at the top are 112 mil. So what I'm gonna do is there's an actual off the shelf liner here that's good for a 100 mil bore, which means when it comes, it'll probably have about a millimeter in it for us to bore out which will be fine. Um, it's 105.5. Well, the base of this liner, fortunately on the original, the base of that liner there and there is 105. 
so we've got half a mil to play with so that means by the time I've bored that liner out in that block in that barrel we're gonna be able to take another half a mil out where are we another half a mil out for for our fitment it's obviously way longer than we need it it's nearly nine inches long so we'll have to trim it down but it's got 109.6 outside flange diameter so the original is 112 so that's going to be absolutely perfect really so what we'll end up doing is by the time we've bored this out we're going to be left with about a millimeter a mil and a half left of the original liner so we should just literally press the new liner into that and that will give us a depth to to face to um, afterwards and obviously we'll trim the liner so it ends up the right the right length so yeah, there's always a way around it, guys. It's nice. We can get bespoke liners made, but it's always nice if we can get an off the shelf because they're next day delivery as opposed to three or four weeks waiting list at the moment. Um, so that is the liner number we need. This is Westwood liners. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get that ordered, guys. Right, so it looks like the bear and bug has raised its ugly head once again. Isaac come in this morning, but in fairness to him, he looked pretty rough. And it looks like he's got the bug that John had. Um, he's a bit sniffly, eyes look a bit ropey, sore throat, aches, you know, the usual. But in fairness to him, I said to him, go straight home. He says, no, let me just get this um, cylinder head faced for the, um, for the Focus ST. And he has done. Um, and we have ended up taking 35 thou off that cylinder head. So that's 35 thou of the head, 35 thou off the block. So we're probably going to have to do some piston modding on this car. Um, but as I said to you, in the past, we've took similar amounts off, off these engines. That customer's had them back, he's put them all together and, and it seems to have been all right. But what the compression was like, I do not know, but he has never heard back. So it's one of them really. Um, but what I'm going to do in a minute is just going to measure the bores. Um, I've set up our bore gauge here. It's 83 mil bore. I set up this bore gauge to that dead on um, with the little hand on the two and the big hand on the zero. So we're just gonna check out what that measures in a second. But while we're on the subject of Fords, guys, you can see that big box over there that we had on Friday. We have revealed the engine that was in. So this is a brand new 2.2 transit unit. Um, the customer is gonna bring in, hopefully later on, the engine to go back. And all we've gotta do is swap over an engine mount and the sump, apparently. So yeah, that one's sitting there waiting for that, guys. But let's go and measure these bores on this ST. So as I say, little hand on the two, big hand on the zero. We'll start off with this bore here. We've got five, about four thou extra running clearance there. And about two and a half down the bottom and yeah, about four and a half to five at the top. And if we go in the x-axis, you can see that that has closed up two thou there. So these things really have gone about seven thou oval. That's on size in the bottom, but on the top, they, they close up about two thou. So it's gone about six thou oval on that bore. That one there, just as bad. That's, see, that's six thou too much there. Um, but yeah, that's what we find. I mean, whether, I expect with something like this, if you did it with a torque plate, see here, look, we've got, what we've got there, seven thou, absolutely horrendous. Um, what it would be like if you, you talked it up, I do not with a torque plate, I do not know, but we have had these before. We had it with a Volvo where the customer sent in a, um, no, a Focus RS, and he sent in a torque plate. We talked the, put the plate on and talked it up, and it was exactly the same. So my feeling is it's just because of the heat, and they've, they've just distorted badly. Um, now, this engine here, this is the one where they usually do the block mod, um, and all they do is drive in a wedge in between these bores, but all that does is, is make it worse. It closes up the bore even more, and we've had it before where it's nearly 10,000 difference between there and there so yeah as I say all we can do on that guys is deglaze it we can't even put it on the hone and deglaze it because it's just going to 
it's just going to miss one area. It's going to be horrendous and we can't take out any more material. So we're going to put the deglazer down there, put a, you know, obviously a disclaimer on the, on the invoice and um, it's on the, on the builder's head, really. Like I say, he's not really had any issues in the past. Very, very strange. But yeah, we'll leave that decision to him. Well, that's it for another video, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we will see you in another episode. Cheers, guys. Yeah.